Welcome to The Queue, a show dedicated to hope, inspiration, and giving back to the community. This evening, we have Ed Hurley, president of the Hockamock Area YMCA, joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Always great to be with you, Carrie. Thanks um, for having me. This is part two of Hockamock YMCA, apparently. Well, you probably got the best part the last time, but I'll do my best. Oh, come on. We go way back. We go way back, absolutely. Right, right, no, right. We, we were talking we about when we used to be auctioneers 20-something years ago. Oh, was I not supposed to say that? Um, no, that's, that's okay. It was 20-something years ago. And, it was um, about 20. For those watching, the hair was full <laughs> back in those days, and it had nothing to do with losing it because of you and auctioneering with you. We had oh. a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun in those days. And I we thought did. it was just me. We raised a lot of money. We did. We did well. Well, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is I first wanted to ask you how you became involved with the Hockamock YMCA. Oof, that's, 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 that's a quite a story. Um, I will tell you honestly, in growing up, I um, you know, went to the YMCA. I grew up in Holyoke, Mass., went to the Y a little bit, but wasn't a Y kid. And um, went to college and um, out in the Midwest and came back to this area. Got my first job at Springfield College. I was the executive assistant to two different presidents. And you say, okay, when do we get to the story? Well, Springfield College was founded as a YMCA college. Really? So, and uh, one of the presidents I was working for, every major gift in the history of the college, they realized was tied to the YMCA. So they wanted to get more connected to the Y again. And we started an advisory council of YMCA CEOs from across the country. And one of my roles was to work with them and support them. And you can probably see where the story is going now. One individual who, for some reason, took a liking to me um, several years later asked me to go to lunch and said, would you ever consider working for the Y? You said, absolutely not. I absolutely <laughs> did, because that week we bought our first house. So I said, it's bad timing. <laughs> yeah. By the third time, he uh, invited me to come down and just uh, meet with him in his office and kind of took me on a tour. I went home, said to my wife, I think we need to look at this opportunity. I worked there for seven years for the YMCA Greater Worcester. And then I had an opportunity to uh, be a candidate for the position down here. And uh, that was 23 years ago. Wow. And it was the you know, best thing ever happened to me in my life. We've been part of this community, and I've been part of this YMCA ever since. And I think what's really nice about this YMCA is there are a lot of staple people there yeah. that have been there for years, and their heart and soul is really into seeing the program succeed, making sure the members feel comfortable, um, so part of what I wanted to talk to you about this evening is your community uh, involvement, sure. community development. So one of the things that I've most recently done with the Y, it was a couple of years ago, um, but we did, uh, we basically did a fundraiser where we brought 300 children to a Paw Sox game right. and we co-sponsored it with the Y. Yeah, well, let me, and if I can just jump back a minute, because you mentioned about, you know, the staff and the stability of staff. Yes. We've got a lot of staff who have been with us a long time, and we've got a lot of staff who are relatively new. And I think the secret sauce to RY mm -hmm. is the staff. I mean, we've got an amazing group of individuals. Um, and a couple things I just point out to you is that, you know, in the course of last year, we had over, which is normal, we had over 1,200 employees at RY, which is a lot. And the thing that I'm really most excited about is you know over 4,000, 37 percent of the staff is under the age of 18, and I say that because we take it very seriously. For many young people, we're their right. first job. Right. They work with us during the year in some of our programs, and then obviously in the summer with mm -hmm. our summer camping programs, it's an opportunity for them to have a full-time you know summer job, mm -hmm. and um, you know we we take that very seriously. So that's that's one of the things we're really proud of. That for so many young people, the Y is oftentimes their first employment. And um, now getting back to the community piece, you know, for folks like you and others that partner with us, you know, we've always been about partnering and collaborating. Whatever we can do to work with others to address some of the needs in the communities, that's what we want to do. And that's where we've had a lot of success. And we work a lot with the schools and all the communities. I mean, our why we serve 15 area communities. And uh, we have branches in North Attleboro, in Franklin, and in Foxborough, our full facility branches, and an arts and education center in Mansfield. And none of those projects would have happened without right. the support from the community. And, you know, we, we think of ourselves as a part of the community. We want to be good citizens. We want to be good partners. And whatever we can do to work with others to meet what those needs are, that's what we want to do. So talk a little bit more about your involvement with the schools. Yeah, we've got, um, we've got wonderful relationships, certainly in all of the communities where we have branches, but in, you know, almost every community of the 15 that we serve, um, we partner with the schools. And those partnerships take on a lot of different faces, if you will. Um, you know, we have in all of our full facility branches, 
So in North Attleboro, in Franklin, and in Foxboro, um, we give the school systems our pool mm -hmm. as their home for swim teams. As a result of that, all of those communities have been able to create swim team programs. The Y is the home. We give it to them free of charge for practices and meets. That's just one thing, just as a way of giving back to the community. Right. Um, we offer in, in many communities after school care and before school care programming, which is obviously so important for working parents. Right. We do it at our Y's, but we also do it in a lot of the schools as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in one of the communities, uh, using Foxborough as an example, um, working with the schools, we created in the high school a youth leadership center, which a, a big piece of it is creating a fitness center and wellness center mm -hmm. that's available to the schools during the day to use as part of their physical education curriculum. And then in the afternoons, we staff it. It's open to the students in the after school hours to come in and work out and try to start to encourage them to you know, healthy lifestyles. So th those are just a couple of examples, but uh, right. you know, there, there's a lot we're doing. And I think um, you know, one of the things that we're real proud of is when a community reaches out to us about a need, you know, we, we want to be we want to be at the table and help any way we can. I mean, right here in North Attleboro, just down the street, is our teen center, right? Which we've been running. I mean, Dawn DaCosta, who you know, is just amazing in the magic she does with with young people. It's not in our branch, but it's in the community. It's a home for a lot of young it's people. It's always been an amazing oh. piece of North Attleboro, I think, in that you know you you are creating a safe environment for teams to come together who might not otherwise have any company at home, so to exactly. speak or any supervision for that matter. Exactly. And then they become part of the community at the, at the teen center. And then they also participate in programs, some of our leadership programs, you know, at the YMCA as well. And Dawn just does an absolutely inspiring job with these, with these young people. And we're at the point now where we've had several young people who were part of the program that are now working for us, right. which is just, it's just, you know, again, really a credit to Dawn, just one of the many amazing staff we have. But what an amazing foundation. Uh, what a strong foundation to say that those same individuals are now still part of the mainstream yeah. of the program exactly. itself. Exactly. And, and another example that I, I'm just thinking of now in terms of a you know, community coming to us with a need was, was back in 2004. I was right here in North Attleboro. Um, where a parent came to us who had a special needs child mm -hmm. and said they, you know, she wanted her son to participate in the YMCA programs. We said, yeah, sure, no problem. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a problem. And as a result of that, and working with the schools here in North Attleboro, we created a pilot that was incredibly successful. We call it our integration initiative. And the principle behind it was to give, you know, young people with special needs and their families an opportunity to participate with their typically developing peers in every program that we offer at our YMCA. And we funded that through um, some great events we do with our Legends Ball, our, Le at, um, our Legends Golf Classic at TPC Boston. The Patriots have been very supportive of that, a lot of New England sports legends. So it's an opportunity for us to tell the story of the impact and the same kind of thing has happened there over the last 13 years. Some of the young people who were part of the program are still part of the program. Some are now working at our YMCA. And it's just and one of the things I'm proudest of all the time I've been here is this program that we created to support the families and the young people who are just some really, really incredibly inspiring young people that uh, are part of our Y family and always will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of your fundraising efforts because a lot of people may not be aware of that sure. um, and how it works. And um, I'm, I'm still yet to go to one of those breakfasts because I, I I go I mean I, I try to go but something inevitably does come up well that's why I we mean, try to have them early morning for busy people so they can get there before the day gets I know, crazy but it's at I seven know. I'm seven. traveling usually I know. well seven yeah so we, we, we've been doing something for years and, and I think we've really created something pretty special um, our annual campaign like most YMCA is one of the things that you know wise are uh, noted for and should mm -hmm. be proud of and we're certainly proud in our areas that our doors are open to everyone, regardless of their ability to pay. And, and that's and that's true. I, it's I mean, absolutely true. I mean, that's that's not just lip service because I've seen. I know I've nominated families and individuals, and and I've seen what the Y does yeah. do. But for for people who might be listening, they might be thinking, well, everywhere it gives out some scholarships and yeah. stuff. But well, but how's our how's our why different? Well, I think you know what what, what we're we're very proactive about it, and one of the things that anybody who's watching now, um, you know, if, if you're in our service area, the 15 communities that our why serves, um, 
all you need to do is pick up the phone and call one of the branches and, you know, share with us. It's a confidential process. And when I say confidential, I don't know who the recipients are. Mm -hmm. And last year, between the scholarships we provided to folks in need and the programs like teen centers that we support, we gave out over $2 million, you know, support folks in the local communities. And, you know, we want them, we want the Y to be a safety net for them. So right. whether it's providing after school care or child care or summer camp, whatever someone needs, you know, we'll be there to help them meet those needs. And folks like Betty Poirier and some of our other, you know, local uh, legislators will say, you know, the Y has always been there. All you do is pick up the phone and call. Right. And that's something that we're really proud of. So, you know, we do try to raise money. It's not a great, you know, if you're looking at it strictly from a business standpoint, you're giving out over $2 million. We'll raise over $800,000. It's what we do. So we do this big breakfast every year to kick off our campaign. The last several years, it's been at Gillette Stadium, a great venue, and we've had a wonderful partnership with the Patriots who have been great friends to our YMCA. Um, you know, we have a facility in Foxborough that's the Kraft Family Center. Mr. and Mrs. Kraft were very generous in um, you know, underwriting a large portion of that. But we get together and we'll have 750 people come together to hear the stories about the impact the Y's having and it's a fundraiser, and we're looking for folks to support the program. But mm -hmm. um, the nice part about it is we get to tell a story. And in days gone by, folks like me and our volunteers would tell the story. Now we have, we've learned that individuals who have been impacted, they want to share their story. And when they get up there and tell in their own words, you know, what the why meant to them and their family and how they were there to help, um, it's, it's pretty powerful. And it's something that makes us all very proud. So anyone out there, if we're the why can, if you know somebody that, that needs a little help right now, our YMCA and other YMCAs throughout Massachusetts and beyond. That's one of the great things about the Y. We'll be there They're for them. there to help. Yeah. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, I would like to sort of dive into uh, the volunteers because you have a lot of volunteers, and I think the volunteers really do um, help execute the yeah, programming. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, so without them, that would be impossible as well. So we're going to be right back. Okay, so where do you want to go next? Volunteers, what else? We got 15 minutes. <laughs> I'll take a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> gotta put your headset back on, we're gonna go back on to a minute. <laughs> Respect? Adventures in Respect, yeah. yeah. Adventures, Adventures in Respect program, which is a, 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 a pretty cool program that okay. we do. Please We're going to talk about that next. Monday yep. okay. evenings at 7 p.m. You can also watch us on a V-stream at 4D Sports. We have a commercial going? Good. We have shows Hi. dedicated to hunger, yoga adventures, homeopathy, pain relief, and much, I'm much short here now. We hope to see you Mondays is at Is it too long? Yeah. I did just get a cut today. <laughs> I mean, my cut last week, but nobody ever notices when mine gets cut. 26 seconds, okay. Welcome back. Uh, tonight in the studio, we have Ed Hurley, the president of the Hockamock Area YMCA, and we were just talking about um, some of the programming and some of the staff uh, that make up the Y and, and why it, it, it is very unique in this area. So before the break, I asked you about volunteers yeah. um, and, and talking about them. Um, I know you had mentioned uh, the Pats a little bit and some of the players that volunteer their time. Um, would you would you like to say sure. a little bit more about that? Yeah, we've been very fortunate. I mean, to be part of this community, obviously, um, you know, we all celebrate uh, the success of the Patriots on the playing field yeah. and love to go to games at Gillette and all of that. And you, you see some of the guys around town. But for us, it's been much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, starting with Mr. Kraft and the culture he created with the organization. Uh, we've had a great relationship. The whole Legends event for our integration program started through the Patriots alumni. They were the group that got together, talked with them about, would you be interested in this? And we have Patriots alumni that come and support all of our events. 
and a lot of the current players have gotten involved over the years too. And I mean not just stopping by the Y, but on a regular basis and coming to camps and coming to programs during the year. And um, we recognize different individuals at our Legends Ball every year with an award. And uh, I think it was three years ago we recognized Nate Solder. Um, two years ago with Devin McCourty, you know, was our recipient. This year, Rob Ninkovich. Rob spoke at our Reach Out for Youth Breakfast last year. And I just say that because, you know, and Matthew Slater is very, very supportive of the YMCA. You know, we root for them on the field, but folks right. don't often get to see what kind of people they are off the field. And um, it's just really great to see individuals who really believe in giving back. They give back to a lot of organizations in the community, and we've been really lucky that our YMCA is one of the organizations that's really benefited from, you know, the kind of people that play for the world champion New England Patriots. And, right, and, and so they, they really are reaping the benefits. So all that community service that yeah. they do, um, we're, we're in it again. We win yep. again. Yep. So that... That's bad. And, and I'd say one last thing. A lot of times when they are doing these things, oftentimes it's quietly. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're right. doing it because this is who they are and what right. they it's believe in. It's not on the news. Nope, there's not exactly. media following them around. And, um, you know, I just, it, it, they're just really pretty special individuals in addition to being some pretty great football players too. Yeah, exactly. And what about the Adventures and Respect program? Yeah, we started that program several years ago. Um, our friends at Honeydew and the Honeydew Family Foundation, um, it was around creating a program to help prevent bullying in, in, in schools. And uh, it has continued to grow every year, and um, we are now doing it in 12 of the 15 communities where we wow. have a YMCA um, you know, presence. The 15 communities we serve, 12 of them, we, we offer the program free of charge. Mm -hmm. They come to our YMCAs in either North Attleboro or Franklin, use our ropes course, so that's a part of the program, to the, the, the kind of team building that goes with that. Mm -hmm. But we've developed our own curriculum around bullying prevention and then we go into the schools during the year as well and honeydew and bristol county um, savings bank and their foundation have been major supporters of this and last year alone by not just during the school year with the schools that come but then offering it in summer camp we had over seven thousand young people that wow. were that were you know had an opportunity to be part of this program and uh, some of the stories we've heard back are pretty powerful in terms of kids getting a greater understanding of the impact of how you treat others and you know respecting differences so something we're really proud of and another example we couldn't have done it without the support of you know partners like you know honeydew in bristol county mm -hmm. well i i mean in bullying is such a big component now i mean there's i i, I see it all the time in my work and i'm sure you know yep. you see it and just why this program has become so important is if children don't understand what impact that exactly. they're having um, the educational piece is just so important that if you if you can't get to that right. as the basis for an understanding of how you want to treat people, um, in that you know you, the schools can say we don't tolerate bullying. However, um, that that's a lot of policing to be done there right. in a school. So if you if you start at the ground level, such as programs such as this. Um, you know, hopefully you can you can really make right. a difference for a lot of kids. And another offshoot of this, it just happened um, two years ago, Carrie, is um, one of the assistant district attorneys with um, for Norfolk County um, approached us about doing something with what we developed in the Adventures in Respect program. And as a result, we created with, with them what they call a team rival program. Mm -hmm. So every high school in Norfolk County is invited to be part of this program and it's the same messaging around understanding, respecting differences in your classmates. And they pick a couple of leaders from each school that are part of it, kicks off with an event at Gillette Stadium, an all-day event. And then there's competition between the schools we at like our that. YMCA. Exactly. The kids like competition. Good. But the, the end result is getting these young people to understand that they, as leaders in their school, can really play a role in helping the culture and you know respecting differences among their classmates so it's it, it's been awesome and again this was the you know one of the assistant da's that just came and said love to do this and it's worked out great did you ever think way back when <laughs> you know that you would have all these different no. programmings going at once no never and i and i think it's you know it's one of the i mean know, we're a town yeah and, it, and it's one of the, it's one of the misperceptions I think of, for a lot of folks about the YMCA. People still think of the YMCA as a place you go to play basketball, you go to swim, and certainly you can do that. Yeah, right. But we're doing so much more. Right. And again, you know, in our area here, it, all the things we're doing 
are things that we're doing collaboratively with others. And I think that's, again, one of the secrets to the success that we've had, and more importantly, the way we've been able to impact kids and families. And our why is always focused on, it's about families. When we've you know, expanded facilities or built new facilities, it was always in about you know, how do we better serve families right. and um, you know whatever the ages are uh, you know people have said to me over the years as the kids get a little older my kids are all older now they're not kids anymore but um, they'll say you know the wise a place you can go you can always go there as a family right even when the kids get older they may do something else but you go as a family you can come back as a family and it's, it, it's something that you know that, that we're really proud of is a place that you know families feel comfortable right. being together and and the, the definition of family just in and of itself oh. over the number of years has changed. Absolutely. I mean, there's blended families, yep. there's multiple families living together. I, I, I mean, in some respects, I see us as going back in time the way things used to be, where, where families, multi-families live together. We're certainly seeing more of that of, you know, the, you know, parents taking care of their, you know, their parents. So right. now you've got grandparents living with kids and, um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and I think uh, I'm proud of the way our wife responded to that, you know, in, in, in welcoming that and, you know, obviously, you know, redefining right. what a family is, you know, for our right. definition. And, right. uh, you know, and, and we're probably, you know, we're very inclusive in, in all ways and we're going to continue to be. Right. Right. Um, what do you hope would. Uh, let me see, let me think how I want to say this. What are the biggest obstacles that you see for the why? going forward, if you see any? Um, I don't I mean, know. I'm that. sure yeah. fundraising is always a big issue. Funding is always, it, it's always a challenge, but right. it's also an opportunity because as we're developing, exactly. you know, new programs and um, new initiatives, you know, to get, you know, folks to believe in it and to support it, you know, helps us. Mm -hmm. As I said before, the, you know, the mission of the YMCA is pretty powerful, but if you don't have the resources, there's right. a limit to what you can do. Right. So that's always going to be something that, you know, we have to continue to work hard at, mm -hmm. something I love to do because when I think about fundraising, I think it, it, you're, you're telling the story. Right. You're sharing with folks a story and giving them an opportunity to invest in something that I certainly believe in and, you know, hopefully they will believe in as well. Right. Um, I think one of the challenges that our YMCA faces, and I'm probably responsible for this more than anyone, is, um, you know, we have to sometimes learn how to say we can't do it all. Mm. And it, it's hard sometimes, but I, I want to always be at the table and there's always, you know, roles we can play, but, um, you know, we can't always lead. And there's areas that it, it's not our expertise. Mm -hmm. You know, the opioid epidemic is an example. You know, that's not an expertise area of ours. It's right. a huge issue. We want to be at the table. We want to be providing support. Whatever kind of support we can provide, we'll do. So that's some of the things that, you know, we're going to continue to, you know, challenge ourselves with to make sure that we're focusing on the areas and provide leadership in the areas that we have the expertise be there to support others and you know really whatever the community needs we want to be there well well i think i think what you're raising is an important issue of community problems community problems Absolutely. that have come up i don't think anybody's ready for this opiate problem um you know there, there's all kinds of training and all kinds of resources going into this but no one's ready to the volume that um that we've hit with this i mean it, no one's immune and no. there, there's it it covers across all classes, all ages. ages. It's Absolutely. very, very sad. And, and we got involved early on in the town of Franklin when they started. And, um, you know, the stories that you listen to folks tell the stories and it's, you know, it, it can happen. It does happen to anyone. Right. And, right. You know, but again, can we help with the education piece? Can we help with the support piece? Right. Absolutely. 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 But again, I think that if you're, if you're hitting <coughs> the masses, uh, where you're able to educate children at a very young yes. age, you know, uh, and getting them involved, family, community, uh, I, I think there's a much better chance uh, when children are connected, just from a legal perspective, when sure. children are connected to their community, you usually have a better outcome in a lot of, in, in a lot of areas. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we've always said, you know, we're not afraid and not ashamed to talk about things like values. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have the opportunity to have young, young kids, whether in our child care programs or our youth sports programs or in our summer camps, you know, we, we have these young people and it's a huge responsibility, something, we take, huge. something we take very seriously. As someone has three kids and now a grandchild, you know, people trust the most important thing in their lives to us. So we're, <laughs> right. very, we're very focused on, you know, safety. And child protection, which is a whole nother area that if you said to me, oh, what do you mean child protection? You know, 
child sexual abuse prevention. I think we'd be, we've been a leader in this area around that and trying to convene others. And some of the communities have been extremely supportive and engaged in that effort to educate, you know, everyone mm-hmm. about, you know, the impact of child sexual abuse. And, um, you know, so we're, we're, we're doing everything we can and always challenging ourselves. Is there more we can do? Are there more folks in the community that we can support mm-hmm. to educate their folks? And, um, you know, we're going to continue to, we'll be continuing to do that. And so if money were no object, money, time, staffing, let's, I, maybe we should group I like that this. all together. I like this world. Yeah, yeah, this money, is hypothetical. Time, time. Money, time, and staffing, if it were not an issue, where would you like to see the investment? At our YMCA? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, there, there are, I've got some dreams. If, if all of those things weren't an issue, you know, and everything that I would dream about, it would be around things that support families, mm-hmm. you know, family adventure type centers, activities, that anything we can do to continue to bring families together and, and give them opportunities to participate in activities together. Um, we're going to continue to reinvest in our own facilities, but, you know, I'd, I'd love to see us be able to do some more things with some of our outdoor space. We added a mm-hmm. splash park at one of our branches last year problem with living in new england is it's a pretty short season for an outdoor I splash know. park but man was it a huge hit you know and again families coming together right so um you know things like you know adventure type centers that we could create you know whether they're standalone or part of our branches and then uh you know some things we could do to our facilities that would you know provide more opportunities for some outdoor use and space are, are kind of at the top of my list but we're always going to be thinking about how do we continue to put you know money back in our facilities i think we built some great facilities here but if you don't take care of them and, and, and reinvest Maybe, constantly, yeah. then we're going to be going backwards and we're not going to go backwards. Exactly. So how would people reach you? Because I know we have about three more sure. minutes. So I want to make sure, first sure. of all, that how, how would they reach you? Because um, you are available via phone. I am available you via are. phone, although I'm never in my office. But email, I'm available though. via phone. But, but email. But email. But email. Um, so I can give you two numbers. My, uh, my office number is... Um, I think this is my office number. I never call myself, so I hope I, I hope I give the right one. If I don't give you the right one, then it's my assistant's, and okay. Judy will be very upset with me. Um, it's uh, 508-643-5230. Yep. I think that's my line. If it's not, it's 5232. How bad is that? <laughs> uh, but the best way to reach me is, um, you know, by email, um, which is... And e- if they get you... If, if they, they get, get Judy, Judy, Judy knows how to find me. Yeah, Judy's yeah, yeah, the best way to find yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she'll, she'll love it that exactly. I can't even remember my, my phone number. And um, the email. And the email is the best know. way to reach me, and that's um, edh, edh, at h-o-c-k-y-m-c-a dot o-r-g, edh at hocymca dot org. And quite frankly, again, if folks have ideas or if, if somebody's aware of a family, I always say this to folks, if you know someone in the local community that might be able to benefit from a YMCA membership or something else we can do, um, please reach out to me and our brand. I'll put you in touch with our branch executives, and I promise, you know, the Y will do everything we can to be there to support the individuals who need us. Well, Ed, I, I'd like to close tonight. I found this quote that I thought was quite fitting um, for, for what you do in, in the Y in our, our community, and the quote goes like this, no matter what's happening around you, first take care of yourself. When you're balanced, all things will gradually, uh, will be gradually added to your life, and the changes you have asked for will occur. And I, like I, I think that that well, it talks about balance, yeah. and I think that's one of the values yeah. that the Y talks about. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank uh, you. It, it was great interview, and uh, keep up the awesome work. Oh, it was great to be with you, Carrie. Right, thanks for thanks for having me. Sure.